you hate the thought of working past 55 or 60? Do you hate not being able to live the life you deserve today? Do you hate not knowing what your financial future looks like? It's time to stop doing what you hate. Here's your host, Mr. Harold Green. Aloha, everybody. This is Harold Green of Bright Tree Financial Group. And it is time to stop doing what you hate. You know, I hope you are having a fantastic day today. I'm doing all right. It's uh, about four o'clock in the morning. And um, I realized that I'm not on the same time frame as everybody else. I'm on a, a different schedule, if I could say that. And I've been cooking up the show in my mind and um, just got back from Japan, had a really nice trip. I'll talk to you folks about that in a bit. But I want to tell you guys something very serious. And I want you to understand something. And I want you to understand where I'm coming from with this. Proverbs says that a soft answer turns away wrath, but a grievous word stirs up anger. And that's Proverbs 15, chapter 15, verse 1. It's always my goal to help people get from where they are today to where they really are want to be. But I've come to realize that I can't drag people to a level of success if they're not willing to partner with me, do the things they need to do, follow my lead, be willing to take advice, be willing to offer suggestions. I'm going to let you know it, it ain't going to work. And my goal is really to make a difference in the lives of others, to help the middle class because I feel that they are struggling the most. And so please forgive me if I say some words that stir up anger in you. But you know what? I think if you're listening to the show and you're not where you really want to be, somebody's probably going to have to say something to you to make you angry, to make you want to get up and do something about what's going on in your life. So the title of today's show is You Can't live a rich man's life on poor man's thinking. I'm going to say that again. You can't live a rich man's life on poor man's thinking. So are you ready? One, two, three, let's get it. All right. Just got back from Japan. Like I said, had a great trip. Went to Hokkaido. Never been to Hokkaido before. Got to go see the, uh, Snow Festival this year, the Ice Festival, beautiful sculptured, you know, just objects out of out of snow and then out of ice. It's almost like crystal. Got some neat pictures. I, I might have posted some on Facebook if you guys follow me on Facebook. If not, check me out. It's my name, Harold Alfonso Green or Alfonso Green. Either one. And just kind of look at some of the things that I got to experience. And my wife and I watched this documentary series on this guy. I'll just call him Masan for short, but it's the story about the founder of the Nika Whiskey Factory up in Hokkaido, Japan. And this man was brilliant, 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 brilliant. Came to America, learned about certain things, whiskey making, went to Scotland, learned about whiskey making, met the love of his life, a Japanese guy, ended up marrying a girl from Scotland, took her back to Japan. And he started the, the Nika Whiskey Factory or company. And it's a very, very heart moving story about how this man had to fight for everything, how he had to convince others that, you know, this was a legitimate dream. This was a legitimate thing that he was doing. Went through the, the World War II or whatever it was when, you know, we, we had those issues where, you know, the Pearl Harbor, all of that, and the Americans came in and, started taking his whiskey. I mean, if you can find the documentary series, it's pretty neat. So I got to realize a dream of mine of going and visiting this factory. We even went to the, the house of one of the people who founded, who helped pay and paved the way with financing for this man's company. And it is a very, very, it's a very emotional thing to go and experience these things and, and to realize these dreams. And it was it was a really good trip. Got to meet with family, got to experience some of the some of the best things in the world over in Tokyo and, you know, if you've never been to Japan, you got to go because they always do it right. They always do it right. They always work at such a high level. 
And one of the things I was telling my nephew in in Japan, you know, they're you know my wife is Japanese, and so we got to go out to dinner with them, travel with them, and just have a good time. And and one of the things I shared with him is that I'm really I'm always impressed when I go to Japan because no matter what a person does, they always do their best to do it at a high level. Whether it is sweeping the floor, there's a process to sweeping the floor. Whether it's cooking the French fries, there's a process for that. Whether it's cleaning the windows, there's a process for that. They are meticulously devoted to attention to detail. And what does that got to do with living a rich man's life on poor man's thinking? I'm going to tell you straight up. It's all about the effort. It's all about the effort and what you're willing to put into it. And I'm going to go through the show. I'm going to give it the best that I can give it right now. I'm a little bit jet lag, but the show, it, it has to come out. I don't know why it's coming out. It's like a baby that needs to be delivered. When it's time to go, it's time to go. Whether you sleep, you just went to sleep, the baby's coming, you got to get it out. And that's how I'm going to treat this show. All right. So maybe a little screaming in here, maybe a little, you know, a little pain, but we'll see where it goes. All right. So coming back from Japan, and I'm going to start with this because it got me a little bit bothered. And um, when I fly, I you know, I don't fly private yet. I fly first class everywhere I go. I ain't, about, I ain't embarrassed to say that because that was a goal of mine a long time ago. It was a purpose of mine not to have to stand there and be packed in the back like tuna fish and sardines in a, in a can. It was my goal. I got tired of that. I got tired of dealing with things where people were acting crazy on the plane. I got tired of that. I said, so until I can get to flying private, I'm going to fly first class. And I told my wife that I said, look, we're not flying coach again. I don't care how cheap it is. So don't bother me with that mindset of, you know, why do you want to pay, you know, $1,000 more for a ticket? I said, it's not about that. We're not going to go there because I made it a goal of mine. And I decided to work as hard as I possibly can in order to make that happen. I do that by making a difference in the lives of other people. And like I said, I think I'm okay at it. I'm, I, I want to be great at it. I'm trying to get there, but that was part of my purpose. So we flew Japan Airlines and Japan Airlines has something they call the Sky Suite. And, you know, you can look it up. The Sky Suite is where you can kind of walk into your little cubicle or whatever it is. And, you know, you have your privacy and people really can't bother you or see you. And uh, so it's pretty cool. So we were able to to book that. And so on the way back and, you know, they're telling us to line up by groups or whatever it might be. And so, you know, we got there and we like, you know, one of the first in line or whatever it was. And you had the people in the economy thing lining up against the wall because, you know, they want to, you know, try to make sure that they can be able to stow their luggage and stuff or whatever they have, because in coach, there's not enough space. So everybody People don't want to pay the extra baggage fees in some cases. And so they try to get in there and pack all their stuff in. And this one guy started, he just started going off. He started talking about, man, these people must be pretty special flying first class and blah, blah, blah. You know, if I'm going to pay that much for a seat, it better come with a massage chair and all this and that. I almost turned to him. I almost turned to him, but soft answer <sighs> turns away wrath, but a grievous word stirs up anger. So I said, you know what, I'm going to. I'm going to let this one go because here's the problem. That dude didn't understand what it took for me to be able to make that happen for me and my wife. That dude didn't know what it took for other people to be able to do that for themselves. And one of the things about poverty minded stuff is they always talking down about what other people got, what are other people doing how other people should spend their money. And here's the thing about that. Anytime you start talking against something, you drive it further and further away. I'm going to say that again. Anytime you start talking bad about something, you drive it further and further away from yourself. You are never going to be able to attain it. So you might as well just shut up and just watch people enjoy their life if that's how you're going to be about it. So here's rule number one. Poverty-minded people always hate 
what they don't think they can get. Poverty-minded people always hate what they don't think that they can have. And that ain't a rich person's problem. That's their problem. It's their problem that they don't want to work hard and do the things they need to do to become successful. And here's the thing about being poverty-minded or wanting to live a rich man's life on poor man's thinking. You have to graduate having to do a job to feed yourself. You have to graduate from necessity to purpose. You have to graduate getting up every day because you have to. You have to graduate and get up every day because you want to. There's something you want to fight for. There's something you want to accomplish. There's somebody you want to help. There's a life or somebody that you need to save. And getting up every day just to put food on the table, although that's a noble idea. However, that's what you're supposed to do anyway. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. I think that's a lesson. That need to be on a bumper sticker. That need to be on the back of our dollar. It says in God we trust. It should be if you don't work, you don't eat. Right? That's my philosophy right there. But however, you have to graduate doing something out of necessity and doing it for a purpose. You got to sit there and you got to start writing your goals down and the things that you want to accomplish in life. And those things have to motivate you. Those things have to drive you because I'm going to tell you something. Doing something out of necessity, you, you might sit there and say, you know what? I don't need that much. I don't need that much. I don't, I don't need all of that. Maybe if I just worked a little less and had a, some work-life balance, you know what? Maybe I'll be happier. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I said, <laughs> the problem with work-life balance doesn't do a lot for your account balance. I'm going to say that again. Work-life balance doesn't do a whole lot for your account balance. Here's the problem with that mindset. Everybody ought to have things that are equally weighted. You ought to be equally weighted, even killed in all areas of your life. Your marriage, you got to spend time with your wife and nurture that relationship. Got to have a purpose for that. Your children, you got to have a purpose for them, right? Yeah, they can have their own goals and dreams, but my purpose was to raise kids that are going to do great things in the world. Whatever those great things are, it's up to them to decide. That's between them and the Lord to decide what their ultimate purpose is. But I didn't want to raise drug addicts. I didn't want to raise gang bangers. I didn't want to raise career criminals. I wanted to raise people that other people would respect. That was my purpose for my kids and what they did with that. That's up to them. But if you're coming at this from a poverty mindset, you may think a little bit differently about your kids and how you raise them. I'm not going to get into that too much. Maybe that's another show, right? But graduating the necessity of having to get up and make money to pay bills, man, that gets you tired. That gets you tired. So I'm part of the Porsche Club Hawaii. It's not a huge club. But you got some very wealthy people in that club with some very fun cars. Very fun cars. Very interesting stories. So we get together probably every quarter or something like that, and we do a drive around the island. And, you know, you get to see, talk to the guys, and, you know, they talk about the specs. And just there's ladies in the club, too, with Porsches. So don't get me wrong, right? Equal opportunity, right? You work hard. You got money. You can buy whatever you want. You ain't got to be a, a man to own a certain type of car. That's that's gone. Those days are gone. You can have whatever you want if you work for it. So here we go again. So we're out there and the leader of the group at the, at the time, his name was Andy. And Andy was a Andy was a disabled veteran. Andy is a, an, an amputee. And uh, Andy, pretty cool guy. So we had our windows down and stuff. And so we're rolling up to the beach park and, you know, there's space. And so we all start lining up and backing our cars in and stuff. And here we go again. This guy 
These guys love their cars more than themselves. This guy is parking in a handicapped spot. He must be pretty special. So Andy gets out with one leg. And I just wanted to like go and beat the guy in the head. But again, soft answer turns away wrath, but a grievous word stirs up anger. And so we just looked at the dude and, you know, Andy got out and you could see that Andy has, he's an amputee, but Andy doesn't have the handicap sticker in his car because Andy doesn't drive his Porsche like he's handicapped. Andy drives his Porsche like he's a, a world champion race car driver. This guy's pretty good. But again, poverty-minded people hate what they don't think they can have. And you know what? I used to have that same mindset. Who would pay that much for a car? It's stupid. You can do something else with the money. I didn't realize that I was putting my mouth against what, what my future could be holding for me prosperity. Now I'm going to tell you, this ain't for everybody. All right. And I'm not telling you, you should ascribe to having, you know, nice things and all that stuff. But here's what I'm going to tell you straight up. Having nice things, doing great things for your family, making a difference in society is a byproduct of your success. It is not everything. It is a byproduct of your success. And so when you graduate going from being necessity minded to being purpose minded, these are the fruits of the labor. They just kind of happen because you switch from being necessity minded to purpose driven, purpose driven. You guys probably heard a book about the purpose driven life. I'm not going to get into that because I don't believe some of the stuff that they talk about, but I have my own way of thinking and being right with the Lord and my own way of understanding what he has for me and the kind of life that he wants to have. So when, when people start talking about stuff and they don't really understand what they're saying, it sounds great, but man, I got to tune that stuff out and I got to tune in and I got to get tuned up with what I'm supposed to be doing. You can't have a rich man's life on poor man's thinking. And the things that drive people who have wealth and success are different than the, the things that, who, that drive people that have a different mindset. It can be upbringing. Yeah, but you know what? Upbringing only goes so far. You can only blame your parents for things that happened in the past so long before you have to make a change and say, you know what? My, I, I know what I grew up with, but you know what? I'm going to move on with my life. Here's another point. I want to make people who are poverty minded dwell on the past too much. They dwell on past failures too much. If, if I could, man, if I could have, you know, if I had a dollar for every time I, I screwed up in life, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where I would be, but you know what? The things that have happened to me in the past, I use them to motivate me to move forward and not to allow that to happen again in my life. So here we are in Japan. It's cold, right? So we end up going from Hokkaido, bunch of snow, man, bunch of snow. It was insane, but we had a incredibly great time with friends and, you know, my, 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 um, my in-laws, which, you know, my brother-in-law is kind of like my friend, very interesting guy, by the way used to work for Panasonic, kind of like an engineer or whatnot, super smart dude. And uh, he, he ends up taking over this company that they, they build specialized equipment to monitor like wear and tear and roads and stuff like that. So, you know, if, you're, if your city and county and government is going to build a road, what he does is he's contracted to come in and like test you know, the, the compounds and everything that goes in and he can tell you how fast the road is going to degrade and what you guys need to do. Brilliant dude. We always talk car stuff. We talk a little bit about work. So he takes us around up there and he takes us to some of the best places and we just have a really neat time. And he's also a gel premier, whatever, whatever, whatever. And it was really cool because our flight got delayed, but because we were rolling with him and he has a gazillion miles, they just say, okay, Mr. Whatever, we're going to take you and your crew and we're going to bump you guys to whatever flight and get you back to Tokyo 
in a decent time. Everybody else's stuff was canceled. People lined up everywhere, right? But because his mindset is a lot different, there's certain benefits that goes along with him working hard. He's not just working hard to feed himself. It's about purpose. And when you work hard for purpose, other people just kind of get to ride your coattail sometimes. I'm not saying that I want to ride somebody's coattails. I don't I don't ride anybody's coattails, but I do believe God's favor is real. Number one ways to get God's favor working in your life is to turn completely away from evil. That's a different show for a different day. But Proverbs says, if you turn completely away from evil, doing wrong things, doing things that you know ain't right. I ain't going to preach at you guys today because it's early and I'm probably jet lagged and hopefully I'm not saying any grievous words to stir up any anger. But turn away and you'll get favor. So I had favor, right? A lot of times purpose gives you favor. So here we are again. We get back to Tokyo, check into our hotel the Prince Sakura in Shinagawa, one of the nicest hotels in Tokyo. I mean, it is clean, as they say in the hood. It's clean. It's dope. It's tight. It's all right. So when we check in, we get there early. We're not supposed to check in that early, but we get there early. And my wife, go, my wife goes up and she's, you know, she checks us in and guess what they do? They upgrade us to the best room one of the best rooms in the hotel. The price of this room was almost, I think it was two times, three times, almost three times as much as the original room. And we had a view overlooking the Tokyo Tower, which everybody just kind of grovels over. If you're in a, in a you know, if you're going to buy an apartment or you're going to do anything, you want to have a view of the Tokyo Tower because it's quite spectacular at night. But they upgraded us to that room. I don't have to pay anything extra for it. Now, could I afford it? Yeah. But sometimes purpose gives you favor that you don't even have to pay for. It ain't even about paying for stuff, stuff, stuff sometimes. Sometimes favor just happens to you. And some people call it luck or whatever it might be, but I call it favor because favor comes to you a lot when you are living and working for a purpose and not necessity. Poor man's thinking is always about luck. Man, if I just got lucky, if I just won the lottery, if I just, you know, if somebody just gave me a break, you know, it's it's always about somebody else having to do something for you in order to make things happen. But when you say, you know what, I'm going to live on purpose and not on necessity because I got to, things are going to change for you. So I wanted to drop this show on you because if you're thinking that, look, man, I don't think I can ever get there. That ain't true. You can have whatever you want if you work hard for it. If you work for a purpose and not necessity. I, I know I'm repeating myself, but it bears repeating because too many people just, they get up, they meander through life and they try to take it easy. And then they, you know, they start getting in all these crazy things. And next thing you know, they're on drugs and da, 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 da. Because they're not living on, they're not living by design. They live by default. And I'm sure you guys have heard this before. You have to design a life. Like they had this, used to have this thing called designer body, right? You got to have a designer life, right? You got to design your life because you only get one, okay? You only get one. You don't get two. You don't get to live twice and come back, right? You only live once and then there's the judgment as the word says. Live once and then there's the end. And so you got to make the best of it. And so I wanted to share with you, you guys, the show, you know, share with you all want to give you some encouragement that you can make it happen and finances should not be an obstacle for us to make things happen in life. But you know what? Finances are an obstacle. They're an obstacle for a lot of different things because not all of us were born with a trust fund. However, you can create a trust fund if you work for purpose and design. You you can create trust funds for your kids and your family and generations. You can, Yeah, you'll be able to do that once you begin to define your purpose. And one of the things I do with folks is I help them with their finances. We create a game plan, a game plan, and then we put that plan into place. But my job is to work with the financial side while you 
work on your purpose side. Your purpose will generate you the revenue to fund your financial plan. That's not the problem. So if you got your purpose going, great. But if the finances are a little janky, as they say, and you need to have that stuff looked at and checked out to make sure that your plan is operating efficiently and as smoothly as that can possibly be, then look me up. Check in the show notes. Get on my schedule. Call Beverly at the office. 808 821-4401. Let her know you want to talk to me for a little bit. She'll she'll work something out. The first appointment is free. I'm going to keep it for free. I was going to charge for it before, but you know what I think is worth my time and, you know, you're trying to invest in your life and you're trying to get better, then I don't mind sparing a few minutes to talk to you about, you know, getting from where you are today to where you want to be. I don't have a problem with that. If I find out that you're not about what you need to be about, I'm going to tell you, sorry, it's not worth my time because you ain't serious. You ain't serious. And a lot of people, that's the problem. They say they want stuff, but they don't want what they say they want. They don't want what they say they want. You know why? Because a lot of times, like I said at my show last time, and during the pain of getting wealth, they don't like the pain. A lot of times, the first sign of pain, people run away. And that's another point. You can't run away at the first sign of pain. And poverty-minded people, guess what they do? they always running away from something. There's always some kind of excuse. There's always a reason why this can't happen. There's always a reason why that can't happen. There's always, there's always somebody else's fault. Running away, making excuses. You can't run and hide. You can't. Because eventually things are going to find you and they're going to catch up with you. And Proverbs talks about that. When you don't do the things you need to do, Poverty will show up at your door like an armed man demanding whatever it needs to demand from you. And you have no choice but to pay up regardless of what it takes. That's why we need to live by purpose and not necessity. Because when we're living by purpose, man, we can meet, we can meet whatever necessity that comes up. Not a problem. The washer breaks, go get a new one. The dryer breaks, go get a new one. The car breaks, go get another one. Something happens to the AC, go get a new one. When you live by purpose, problems are not that big. We magnify the problems in our life. That's another point of the poverty mindset. Always magnifying problems. They get cut on the finger, man. It seems like they're going to lose an arm or something. You, You met those people, everything is 10 times as bad as it is. And you know what happens when you do that? You call more problems into your life. You call those things that you speak the loudest about. You call those things into your life that you speak the loudest about and the most about. The word says you shall have whatsoever you say. And you got to have to be careful what you're constantly saying. You're going to have to be careful what you're putting out there. All right. So if you're putting positive things out there, you get positive things coming back at you. You put horrible things out there, you're going to get horrible things coming back at you because your mouth, your words are seeds that you sow. And I want to sow these seeds and these words into your life and hopefully they spring up and produce a crop, right? 30, 60, 100, four return, whatever it might be. But we got to go from living by necessity to living by purpose. So thank you very much for tuning in today. Man, I hope this show blesses you and take you to a whole new level. Looking forward to having a conversation with you folks if you want to talk to me about your finances. I don't I don't talk to people about their marriages and all that stuff. That ain't what I do. So if you got those kind of problems, you got to go get some professional help, right? We're talking about money, M-O-N-E-Y, money, right? Some people call it wealth. It's money, right? People ask me what I do. I'm a money manager. It's, it's easy to understand. Wealth management. Most people are like, well, wealth, what does that mean? right? Money manager. That's what I do. I help people manage money. I manage it for them. I invest it. We do different things. That's what I do. And I want to help you if that's what you need help with, right? I want to be a part of your team. If you meet the criteria, I want to be a part of your team. I want to partner with you to do great things in life, to have great stories you can tell to your friends and your families, to help you become Somebody that is respected and the other people look up to because you are living by purpose and not by default or necessity. 
So thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you. And until next time, everybody, one, two, three, let's get it. This is the podcastfactory.com.